This is the time I want to talk to the children for a few moments, and I want to talk about um, dance. Now, some of the kids probably know a lot more about dance. I know there's some um, young ladies in our congregation who uh, have taken dance lessons, some for a couple years, some for many years, and uh, they get the outfits and everything, and they learn these routines, and their body twists in all sorts of different directions and situations, and uh, luckily you're not going to see me do that this morning, um, save you from that. Uh, but dance moves are choreographed, and you have to follow a certain pattern to, to make it smooth and make it go right. And so you, you know, some just make a square and do that and dance move. With God, we also have uh, some dance moves, some things that he requires us to do, some steps that we need to take. And as we look at today's passage, we're going to explore how Jesus meets three, three outsiders and, and how, he, how he dances with them because they make, they make moves. Because we're going to talk about faith, and faith is a, is a movement, is an action. So the, the next time that you're, you're dancing with somebody or you're at a wedding reception or whatever sort of party you're dancing, think about are you in step with God? Are you in step with God and, and drawing closer to him and, and living a life that is, is pleasing to him? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and just thank you that you could be with us today because we know that we need you now more than ever. Each and every day, we need your, your presence in our life. We need the power of your Holy Spirit working within us. Lord, in, in the midst of all that's going on in our world, as we're masking, sheltering in place, protesting, doing all this stuff, Lord, uh, we're, we're learning new moves. But Lord, may we never forget that the move that we are to make is to draw closer to you. To, to wait for you, to call out to you, to cry to you, to listen to you, Lord, and to respond. So help us all to, to dance and to have faith in you. Faith is not in, a, in, in our government. Faith is not in ourselves. Faith is in you, God. And you can heal all situations and all things that we encounter, Lord. So we come before you, Lord, seeking to live, to laugh, and to dance together. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Matthew's Gospel. Of the 8th chapter, we're going to read verses 1 through 17. And if you didn't bring your Bible, they will be up on the screen this morning. Matthew chapter 8, and we begin our reading at the first verse. When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. I tell that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside in darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done to you just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. 
When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. Here ends the reading of God's holy and inspired word. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to I've already mentioned we're going to learn some dance moves. I'm not going to demonstrate them, so do not fear, but I'm going to talk about them. In fact, I probably need dance lessons more than anybody watching or hearing this. Today we're going to look at dance lessons in terms of our faith. Right now in the midst of the pandemic and the protests that are going on, I think this is a time that we need to really draw on our faith. Today we're going to look at three individuals as they deal with Jesus and they deal with faith. And we're going to look at Jesus' power to heal, to heal different situations. Right now we need the power of Jesus' healing in our lives and in our world. Jesus' power to, to heal is the power of God. When Jesus heals these things, it's, it's only through the power of God that this healing can occur. And as we think about it, God's power is limitless. God's power created something out of nothing. In the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis, we read about how God took what was void and formless and he spoke and the world was created, and all the universe that we know was created through the power of God, and that power rests in Jesus. And we're going to see Jesus demonstrate that as he encounters three different individuals that we could label as outsiders. What I, what I find enlightening and interesting as we learn from these people is they're un, un, unlikely people and that's the first point this morning is that we can learn faith from some unlikely people when we talk about faith we think about poly persistent pew sitter now say that really fast but Polly persistent pew sitter is the one who's in church every Sunday worshiping every Sunday. There, let's go talk to that person about faith. But as we see today, we see some very unlikely people outside of the church who demonstrate to us some uh, amazing faith. Uh, the first person we're going to look at is a man with leprosy. A, a, a leper, he, he has a title. A man with leprosy is called a leper. They're, 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 they're called that. Um, in all three of the situations we're going to look at today, none of the people have a name. We're not given any names. They're just individuals that have an encounter with Jesus. So let's look at what happens. If you have your Bibles handy. When he came down from the mountainside. Now, in verse 28 of chapter 7, we read, When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, 
because he taught as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. So there's this large crowd listening to Jesus. And he comes down the mountainside. Large crowd followed him. And a man with leprosy came and knelt before him. Now, as we look at that, that seems, oh, very straightforward, very simple. Jesus comes down the mountainside, leper comes, kneels before him. But what do we know about leprosy? Leprosy is a horrific skin disease. It's very, very obvious. It's very disfiguring. Lepers were unclean. They were outcasts of society. If you, had, if you had leprosy, you were to live in a colony outside of the city walls with other lepers. They were required that when they walked and you were within a certain distance of someone, you were to holler, unclean, unclean, so that people would know from a distance that you were a leper. Now the Jewish people, God's chosen people, took the physical uncleanliness to another step because they looked at it also as a spiritual uncleanliness. When they saw a leper, they saw someone who was diseased because they were displeasing God. Leprosy was a mark of God's displeasure. And it's, it's a horrible disease. So here we have a leper who lives outside of the city. He's an outcast from society. Jesus comes down the mountainside with the crowds. What happened? Did, did, the, did, the, did the sea part? Did the, did the crowd, how did the crowd just all separate so this leper, who's supposed to holler unclean, could walk right up between them and kneel at the feet of Jesus. This is, this is, this is amazing how, how he even can get to Jesus, but he does. Leprosy is a, is a noticeable disease. You know, he'd have to be very well clothed to be, so that people would not see it but it shows up in all parts of your body. And I understand a little bit about leprosy. I have a skin condition called psoriasis, and I have, uh, I have spots on my elbows and spots on my knees. In the summer when I go out in shorts and short sleeve shirts, um, kids will uh, come up to me and go, ooh, ooh, owie, owie, and, you know, and what is that? What is that? You know? And so I can understand just a little bit of what leprosy is. And so they had to notice that there was something with this man but yet he can walk right up to Jesus. And he comes up to Jesus, and, and listen what he says. He knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And look what Jesus does. Jesus reached out his hand, and he touched the man. Here's a person who's, who's outcast, who his family and his society, everybody has outcast him. You are not to touch. You're not to come near him. You're not to touch him. But Jesus reaches out and knows what this man mean, needs, and he touches him and says, I am willing. Be clean. And immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Jesus touched the man. There is still no man-made cure for leprosy. And leprosy is still around today. Uh, we don't see much of it here, but in certain kind of parts of the world, there is still leprosy. And there's no cure. There is, there is a cure, though. Contradict myself. The only cure is Jesus. Jesus is the cure. And that's the, that's the second point this morning. The first dance step is seen by a leper as he comes toward Jesus. He takes a step towards Jesus. He came and knelt before him. 
And so that's the first thing we need to do. As we're dealing with our world and our sin and our uncleanliness around us and inside of us, the first thing we need to do is step toward Jesus. Come before him. No matter how bad your situation is, make a move in the direction of Jesus because he can make a difference in your life. Now let's look at the second person in verse 5. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Now, centurion, this guy has a couple strikes against him. First, he's a Gentile. Second, he's part of the, the, the Roman army. The Jewish nation, the Jewish people, God's chosen people, at one time, they ruled a lot of the area. In the Old Testament, we read about King David and King Solomon and Jerusalem and the wars and the mighty power that they had. But then they were taken into captivity. And now they live under the, the, the Roman rule. The Roman government has taken over the area, and they're the authority. The Jewish society has to live under their authority. And it doesn't make for, a, for an easy or a good relationship. But now, in Luke's gospel, there's two accounts of this. Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel. In Luke's gospel, the centurion has the Jewish elders come and make the request before Jesus. In Luke's account... The centurion is a friend of the Jewish elders because he helped the building and rebuilding of the synagogue. And so he's a friend. Now, there's two different accounts. It doesn't make a difference to the story who exactly is making the request because the words are exactly the same. The centurion in verse 8 said to Jesus, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. He is told and goes on about when I say to go and come, and I know about authority, and I know that when I speak something, people listen, and I know your authority. The centurion recognized the heal, healing power and in faith asked Jesus for help. Now, look at verse 10. When Jesus heard this, say the word in my servant, I don't deserve to have you come in my room. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth. You need to take notice. Jesus is, you know, I tell you the truth. This is something that people need to, their ears need to perk up. You need to listen to. When Jesus tells the truth, because there's so much false in our world and so much lying and cheating and that, but Jesus is telling the truth here. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Wow. Wow. Anyone. This is, this is a powerful statement. We need, to, we need to grasp the significance and the power of this statement. I have not found anyone in all of Israel. I've not found anybody in the church who has the faith that this outsider has. The person outside of the church, outside of the chosen people, has such faith. And the fact that Jesus was going to Go to his house and heal the servant was a bold move. And he, the centurion recognizes Jesus' power and his authority by just saying the word. The word. We talked about that a few moments ago. When, when God created everything, he spoke everything in a, into the existence. And now this centurion 
says to Jesus, you just speak a word and the power will go out from your word and healing will occur. So the centurion laid aside his differences, his pride, his cultural, his spiritual differences. And today we could stop, may say his racial difference. He laid everything aside. And the third point, which is the second step in the dance, or the, the centurion astonishes Jesus with his faith. And the next one, his step is to take a leap of faith. He takes a leap. The leper comes down, takes a step toward Jesus, if you will heed me. And then the centurion takes a leap. A leap of faith. It says, you just say the word and, and my, my servant will be healed. And Jesus says, I've never seen such faith in all of Israel. He was astonished by his faith. And you know there's only two times that he was astonished. One is in this passage. When the Roman centurion comes before him, he's astonished. The other time is in his hometown when he sees lack of faith. The people who watched him grow up and listened to him and knew him, they had lack of faith. The two times, great faith, lack of faith, and Jesus, the Son of God, is astonished. Faith is not just asking and receiving, but taking action. Faith is demonstrated by our obedience and our submission to the authority of God. The last individual we're going to look at. Again, unnamed. Jesus comes into Peter's house and he saw Peter's mother-in-law. Someplace else she may be, be named, but in this passage it's just her mo his mother-in-law. She's lying in bed with a fever. And again, he does what? He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on them. Not much there, is it? It'd be difficult to preach on those couple of verses. But we include her as one of the three. Now you might say, well, how is she an outsider? I can see the leper. He's got this horrible skin disease. He lives outside the city. I can see the Roman centurion because he's part of a, a different culture He's an authority in, in an enemy army. But why Peter's mother-in-law? Well, women in those days in that society were second-class citizens. When the temple was built, when Solomon built the temple, there was a place for the, for the men to worship and there was a place for the women to worship. In this country that continued for years, I remember in our last church we celebrated a, a centennial, 100 years of the church being in existence. And I have a tendency to see pictures of some of them. And what they do is they go back to the old days. And so the men sit on one side and the women sit on the other. Now why would you separate the men from the women? Because there's a difference in class and society. So this woman, Peter's mother-in-law, is a second-class citizen. But Jesus touches her and heals her. But what we want to focus on is what happens immediately after the healing. He touched her hand, the fever left. She got up, started dancing and rejoicing and went and told everybody else. She began to wait on him. She began to to serve them. And that's the last dance step. It's learning to receive and serve others. So we take a step toward Jesus. We take and bring all our baggage, all our sin and our uncleanliness, and we take a step toward Jesus. And then we take the leap of faith. And then we step out to serve God 
and to serve others. And that's what we're called to do. In, in, this, in this time, in this situation, we're wondering, you know, what are, we, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? That's what we're supposed to do. Because when we do that, step toward Jesus, leap of faith, and serve God and others, God will come and heal our land. Because our first and foremost calling is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And your neighbor as yourself. Let us pray. God, we come before you today asking that you will not only heal our land, heal our world, but heal our life. Lord, for any uncleanliness that we're dealing with right now, for any anger, for any resentment, for any thoughts that are in our mind, for any uncleanliness, Lord, we confess today. We humble ourselves before you. We come seeking your touch today, Lord. And I'll just pray that I pray today that you will touch everyone who hears this message. You will just touch the people as they hear the message that are being presented through many, many pastors, through many services today. That we all think about healing our relationship with you first and foremost. Loving God with all we are and then healing with our neighbor, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, break down the walls, break down the barriers, forgive us where we are not the good Samaritan, where we walk by on the other side. And we snub our nose up and we ignore the needs around us, Lord. Thank you for bountifully blessing us in a land that has um, such freedoms. Some of the freedoms are, are seem to be restricted, Lord, but we thank you for the freedom to worship the freedom to come before you today and acknowledge who we are and what we need. We need Jesus. Jesus to care for us, for our uncleanliness, for those around us who are sick, for those that we need to serve. Lord, I thank you for hearing our prayers and for being with us as this week began and there was so much unrest and now as we've come to the close of this past week we, we see that many things have calmed down and people have, have, have become peaceful and joined together and may that be just a, a beginning of a revival of a renewal of the Holy Spirit working in this place Lord, there is a need. There's a need just as great as any other time. And Lord, we want to be a time where you look down and say, wow, I'm astonished at what these people are doing. And there's only two things that astonished you. Great faith and lack of faith. Lord, we have to choose. Where are we going to stand? How are, how are we going to dance? Are we going to dance and show you great faith and astonish you? Or are we going to show you a lack of faith? That decision is ours, each one of us as individuals, Lord. We ask that we might do that which is pleasing in your sight. Lord, we, we pray for those um, who are <clears throat> dealing with loss. We pray for Mark and Jackie, the passing and the funeral of his his mother, we just thank you for her years of life and faith, and they could be with her. We pray for others who've lost loved ones or are dealing with people who are sick at this time, or waiting for surgeries, trying to get into doctors, and all the things that are going on. We pray as, as our nation, as, as our world starts to what we call reopen and return to what we call normal. 
may normal be a time where we grow stronger in our faith. May it be normal for people to speak the name of Jesus Christ, to talk about their faith and not live in fear. Lord, we just thank you for hearing our prayers, those that are spoken and unspoken. And Lord, hear us now as we share the prayer which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in singing, No one ever cared for me like Jesus. take a time to offer ourselves to God. Offer the gifts and talents and what we have back to God. And so at this time, uh, Denise is going to share her gift of music with us. Thank you. 
for reminding us of the God who has the power to heal, the God who has the glory that we must worship. Receive now the closing blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.